Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Nybester Brach. Nybester Brach has been called one of the most spectacular Iron Age settlements in northern Scotland by the Caithness Archaeological Trust. But this could very well be an understatement. The area of Caithness was home to a lot of Iron Age communities in Scotland, and Nybester was one of its largest. It was built sometime around 700 BC, unique for its connecting passages between stone buildings. The settlement wasn't that large, but it was quite complex for its time. People lived here about a thousand years before Rome found its way to Britain and invaded it. Excavations of this ancient place began in the late part of the 19th century thanks to Sir Francis Tress Barry. One of the most notable and interesting things about this particular settlement is the combination of ancient remains from the Iron Age, which are circular in nature, and the memorial known as Mervyn's Tower, which was built with stones removed from the site as a memorial to the nephew of Sir Francis Tress Barry. The memorial is strangely decorated with gargoyles and plaques and stands in odd contrast to the rest of the site. Apart from building the odd memorial tower, he and his excavation team discovered stone tools, random metal objects, and lost pieces of pottery at the site. Pretty much the exact same stuff you'd expect to find in any ruined Scottish settlement. The major difference here is that Nybster Brach has been gradually destroyed because of coastal erosion. The people who built this settlement did so on the very edge of a cliff overlooking the ocean. Over thousands of years, the edge of the cliff has gotten shorter and shorter, meaning many parts of the mysterious settlement have already fallen into the water. Number 9. Pre-Hispanic Mexico In Mexico, there is a new railway being installed on the Yucatan Peninsula. The railway is going to be fast, and it's going to zip people between the most important archaeological locations in the old territory of the Maya. But ahead of its construction, Archaeologists have been hard at work trying to preserve any ancient ruins that the construction of the railway might destroy. And they have found a lot of stuff. Archaeologists with the National Institute of Anthropology and History have found thousands of mysterious pre-Hispanic sites, including burial grounds and structures, many dated as far back as the year 700 BC. According to a statement given by the researchers, they have found earth mounds, extremely complicated stone architecture, and thousands of pieces of broken artifacts. These discoveries could reveal a lot about the daily life and trade of the Maya people. But so far, the team has only looked at the first 140 miles of the Maya train project, which goes on for over 950 miles. The first discoveries came near the ruins of Palenque, an ancient Maya city. What all this means is that hidden underground, hiding under trees, and maybe even sitting in plain sight are hundreds of lost settlements, villages, and secret temples that nobody has ever seen before. But unfortunately, the construction of this new train is probably going to cause them to be totally annihilated before any dedicated archaeologists even have a chance to study them. Number 8. Cave of the Apocalypse the Patmos Cave of the Apocalypse has been called the most spiritual cave in the entire world. It's located about halfway to the monastery of Agios Loanis. It's a sacred grotto believed to be the exact place where Agios Loanis had a vision from Christ, which he went on to record in the Book of Revelation. In case you aren't totally up to speed on Christian history, Agios Loanis is sometimes referred to as the Apostle Loanis. He was exiled to the island of Patmos in Greece around the year 95 AD. It was there that he is said to have received revelations from God, spoken to him from a cleft in a rock. It was the Apostle Loanus in this cave, after he was exiled from his home by the Roman Emperor Domitian, who wrote the final book of the Bible, the Book of the Apocalypse. What is fascinating is that this isn't just some Christian fairy tale. The cave is very real and it's been a sanctuary for around 2,000 years. You can still see today the very spot where Loanus rested his head each night. According to the legend, he used a rock as a pillow, and that rock is still sitting in the cave. But of course, the big mystery is trying to figure out what truly did happen inside the Cave of the Apocalypse 2,000 years ago. Did Agios Loanus truly hear the voice of God from a rock, describing to him how exactly the world would end? Or, on the other hand, was he a hallucinating or manipulating man who wrote himself quite the fiction? 
Many believers use these writings today as a blueprint for how the world will end. Number 7. Tomb Beneath the Temple Archaeologists conducting a survey at the Temple of Hatshepsut in Egypt have made an outstanding discovery in the form of a subterranean tomb. The temple itself was constructed during the 18th dynasty of Egypt, when the nation was under the rule of the female pharaoh Hatshepsut. Today, the Grand Temple can be found near the city of Luxor, still in shockingly good condition. It's one of the most picturesque temples in all of Egypt, built directly into the cliffs of Deir el-Bahari, with its three terraces looking as though they had just been finished yesterday. Part of the great preservation has to do with the efforts of an archaeological expedition that has been working since 1961 to conserve the temple. Polish archaeologists with the Center for Mediterranean Archaeology have been doing an amazing job. During recent restoration work, they found a tomb and a burial chamber. The burial chamber was discovered filled with debris, lots of broken artifacts, and it probably belonged to someone who was related to the pharaoh. But here's what makes it so interesting. Archaeologists found a lot of artifacts, dozens and dozens of figurines depicting everything from deities to cows. Dr. Chudzik, who was involved with the study, believes the items were probably thrown into the tomb by the staff at the temple. They would have been accepting offerings to the dead pharaoh, but probably wouldn't have had enough places to store them. So they simply used the tomb of one of the pharaoh's relatives as a giant garbage dump for offerings. Number 6. An Ancient Warship Archaeologists have discovered an amazing and mysterious archaeological site on the coast of Riga, the capital of Latvia. The Latvian authorities were first alerted to the treasure by some local residents who found a chunk of a ship's hull poking through the sand at the beach. It's now believed that this strange ship has been sitting there for over 200 years. Archaeologists have removed over 36 feet of sand just to get a better glimpse of the ship, which is almost perfectly preserved. The reason the oak timbers have survived so long, despite being made of organic material, has to do with the sand. Being buried like that with very little access to oxygen allowed for the shipwreck to remain in awesome condition. The ship itself hasn't even been properly measured yet. There is so much sand that experts haven't been able to get a full view of the vessel. They don't even know exactly how old it is and have had to make some educated guesses based on physical evidence. Evidence like the shape of the ship, some copper nails found in its hull, and some copper plating. The use of all the copper suggests the ship was built by the British sometime in the 1870s. It could have been a warship or a merchant vessel, but nobody has any idea. Latvian archaeologists are still working to fully excavate the ship and maybe even discover its cargo still intact. Number 5. Men and Toll Men and Toll was built in the Bronze Age, making it roughly 3,500 years old. The reason the site is so exciting is that it's unique and one of a kind. It consists only of four giant stones, with one of them being a circular stone with a hole punched through its middle. The other three stones are ordinary granite pillars, just like any pillar that was used in dozens and even hundreds of stone circles across England and France. Men and Toll is hardly as exciting as Stonehenge, but it's fascinating in its own special way. It's the rock with the hole in its center that's really quite fascinating. The hole is about three feet across and was used in ancient rituals. The old people who lived here, descendants probably of the people who built Stonehenge, associated the hold stone with magical powers. They thought that if you had back pain, this stone could heal you. They also thought that they could heal a child suffering from rickets or tuberculosis using the stone. For the latter, you would take the naked child and pass them three times through the stone, at which point they were supposed to be cured. Though, of course, this probably didn't work. What do you think is the meaning behind this hold stone? Have you visited this ancient site? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe because we have lots more videos like these coming up. Number 4. Roman Battlefield a hobby archaeologist made a shocking discovery that led real archaeologists to excavate a mysterious ancient battle site from ancient Roman times. The amateur archaeologist found an impressive ancient dagger over 2,000 years old. This prompted researchers with the University of Basel to go investigate. They then found more old relics such as stones from slingshots, a handful of coins, some random nails, and a piece of a shield. 
All these artifacts had been left behind after a clash between a local tribe and the advancing Romans around the year 15 BC. The battlefield is in the southeast corner of Switzerland, in a giant field that nobody would ever think had once been the scene of a massacre. Archaeologists believe the battle was fought between the forces of Rome and a local Raetian tribe. Peter Schwartz, who is associated with the research team, says it's the first time the remains of a Roman battle have ever been found in Switzerland. Probably 1,500 soldiers fought, which makes it a pretty small battle compared to others throughout Europe. But it may have been an extremely important battle. This was at a time when the Roman Emperor Augustus was trying to expand Roman control and bring the nearby mountain regions into the fold. Vanquishing these tribes, who the Romans saw as barbarians, was the first step into a great and all-powerful empire. Number 3. Underground Etruscan Pyramids In Italy, a mysterious set of underground pyramids from the enigmatic Etruscan culture were recently found. To make things even more shocking, the remains of the pyramids were found underneath a wine cellar in the small city of Orvieto. The wine cellar is relatively new, but the archaeologists discovered an ancient set of stairs carved into the wall that led them underground. What they discovered was a series of caves carved like a pyramid, along with various tunnels hinting at even deeper structures below that have yet to be found. We are dealing with a lot of layers here. Keep in mind that the wine cellar was built sometime in the 20th century. Underneath the cellar were the remains of a medieval floor. Underneath that, there was a layer filled with artifacts dating all the way back to the 5th century BC. These artifacts were clearly left behind by the Etruscans, who built complex underground structures. But under the layer of artifacts is even more mystery just waiting to be discovered. Archaeologists are still busy tunneling beneath the wine cellar to see just how huge of a complex the Etruscans built. There could be multiple pyramidal structures still hiding underground, which only adds to the mystery of the Etruscans. The Etruscans were basically the first Romans. They are believed to have taught French people how to make wine, taught the Romans how to build roads, and were the first ones to write in Europe. They flourished in central Italy around the year 900 BC dominated for 500 years, and then were completely wiped out or absorbed into the Roman Empire. Number 2. Lost Fortress Archaeologists doing excavations in the Judean foothills of Israel have discovered a Hellenistic fortress that was probably destroyed during a battle 2100 years ago. According to the Israel Antiquities Authority, their archaeologists have found coins, weapons, and charred wooden beams in this mysterious fortress. The charred beams would suggest that the fortress succumbed to fire and was burned down during an attack by the Seleucids. Here's a bit of background. 2,100 years ago, Judea was ruled by the Hasmoneans. Modern scholars believe this was the first independent kingdom of Israel in history. However, things weren't quite peaceful. The region was under the iron thumb of Hellenistic rule, with the Seleucid dynasty being in control at this time. When they initiated anti-Jewish decrees, the Hasmoneans rebelled and fought back. The Hellenistic forces had erected a line of protection to protect the city of Marisha. This newly discovered fortress had probably been part of that defensive line. But judging by the evidence of burning, it would appear the Judean rebel forces tore through the fortifications like a bull through paper, going on to overthrow their suppressors and rule their own kingdom. Number 1. Scythian Treasures in Russia, a mysterious gravesite dating back 2,400 years has been discovered. Well, it's less of an individual gravesite and more of a necropolis, an entire cemetery of tombs that still hold the bodies of ancient Scythian warriors. The Scythians were nomadic people who lived in what they call Scythia. Today, this area comprises many parts of Kazakhstan, Siberia, and even pieces of Ukraine. But what's truly interesting about the Scythians is that they didn't leave behind any written history, and they never built any cities. Their entire culture is a mystery, with what little we know about them being based on writings from other civilizations like the Greeks and the Assyrians. The only physical link we have to these lost people comes in the form of buried treasure discovered in tombs. In this necropolis, graves have yielded impressive artifacts that could teach us more about Scythia. Archaeologists have found things like silver plates decorated with strange gods and hybrid animals. It would appear they had a very complicated mythology, 
complete with unknown gods and fantastic beasts that we know literally nothing about. Thanks for watching! Which archaeological place would you love to visit the most if given the chance? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to check out the hundreds of videos we have on the channel. See you later! Bye!